Hi everybody, it's Beverly here over at Crafting Chaos and I showed you this video, sorry, this file on Facebook yesterday and I did say that it would be coming to the channel soon so I am going to show you how to actually put the file together. It might not come out exactly the same as what this one is but it will be in the most part a very good representation of this and I'll take you through the process. Now I have to say, I'm just going to close this for a second and open a new one um, but we won't save that I'll come back to that in a minute I have also made similar ideas with a pentagon you can just about make it out here and also this diamond shape which has come out using the diamond shape from within the shapes that are already in scan and cut canvas so there's nothing that you need to download or anything the only thing I've got on here that you might not have is the actual font and we'll talk about that as we work through the rest of the projects so if any, if you're interested leave comments below if you're interested in these other files and I will add those to my blog as well if there's enough interest all right so that's the other file so I'm just going to go back to the one that we were going to work on and that is the one that was made with a kind of it looks like a, a, an arc really but it's a, not as simple as just getting it from a circle it, um, and I'll explain as we move along so I'm going to move all these bits off to the side of my file that's already been created and I am going to start from scratch and show you how to make it put it together etc so that it looks within the realms of what this looks like so I'm just moving all these parts off to the side. Incidentally, I only put colour in it just to make it look a bit, little bit more um, so you could tell what the file was going to look like. So I'm just going to move those off to the side. In fact, I'm going to just undo that and move them together. So I'll just select all those now and move them across together just to save a little bit of time. And it might be a good idea if we keep everything that's already made to this side and then I don't mix it up with stuff that we're making so that's where we're up to okay so what you need to do is you need to bring on a shape first of all now the shape I'm suggesting that you bring on is an oval shape or a half moon shape whichever you prefer I'm going to go with the ellipse because we want something that's going to form a nice but not too steep arc. So what we're going to do first of all is make it short and stout, if you will, which makes that um, a, a nice curve rather than too curved. And if we just move that across, can you see how that's more or less that shape? We just need maybe a little bit more curve than there, but that's about roughly it. Okay, so now what we need to do is we're going to get some other shapes that we're going to use to manipulate it into the shape that we want. So I'm just going to bring on a square and I'm going to leave it as size is because that's what I've done more or less with the oval apart from um, squishing it down a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is just align them centrally and weld initially. So that's kind of looking there but we're not there yet. So what we need now is another couple of squares and I could have duplicated that if I'd have been thinking but I didn't. So we'll bring on another square and take a duplicate of it and then we've got it if we need it again. So we don't need to keep going into the shape option. So now what I'm going to do is I need to cut it along here and also along here. So I'm going to first of all position it roughly where I want it to be which is here. And then I need to rotate the angle a little bit. So I'm going to try minus 35 and see what that's looking like. Now that's a little bit too angled. So I can't just remember what exactly the angle was. So I'm just having to go from my instinct at the minute. But I will give you the actual angle in a second. And I've selected that now. So it's just going to take a few seconds for it to deselect. There we go. There was a lot of nodes. All right, so we're going to go back on that and we're going to make it less, keep going until I'm happy with the angle. 
though. It's only quite a shallow angle, actually. And we'll stop about there. So it's about minus six, call it minus seven. And I'm just going to elongate that one now so it comes to the bottom. And I'm going to bring this one in in a minute. And we're going to take a duplicate of that. And we're going to flip it using the horizontal flip action. And we're going to move that across to the other side of the shape. Then we're going to select those two, just the two rectangles that we've tilted at this stage, and line them up to the bottom so that they're both the same height and we're going to group them. Because that will allow us now to be able to centre them on that shape there so that we're getting the proper, if you will, exactly the same arc at both sides. It's going to be a symmetrical shape if you see what I mean. So now I'm going to drag this one across to make it longer and we're going to make that one here. So what we're actually going to do when we cut it out, we're making this shape here, if you can see. So that's the shape we're making when we cut everything out. So we need to make sure that that one is at the very back. So I'm just going to check by sending it to the back and we should be good then. So now we select everything and we subtract. And that has left us with that shape that we're going to use to make this. Um, so I'm just going to use this as a reference. I'm going to flip. So I can you can use, do it by eye, whatever. So we need to, I'm just going to resize them for now. And I'm going to need a few different sizes. Now what I would do is definitely don't think, oh, I'll just do the one and then reduce the size. If you do that, every time you change the size, this sort of border, if you will, is going to get narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower. And that's not what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the offset function to get some shapes that are smaller than that. So I'm going to reset it. So I've gone on offset, sorry. And I'm going to make the spacing, try 0.25 first of all, and see where that's looking inward. And we'll just see how we've got with that. So that's now made as a replication of that shape, but it's much smaller. So then we're going to go again, 0.25 inwards, say OK. So now we've got another one that's smaller again. Offset, inward, same setting. So we've got one that's smaller again, and we'll do it one last time. Offset, say OK. And that's given us our five different shapes now like I've said they might not be exactly the same they look a little bit longer so I'm going to select them all so then they'll be done proportionally so I'm just going to make them a little bit shorter if you will shorter and fatter so there we are so that's our shapes now as we go so now I'm going to select all of my five shapes that I've just created and I'm going to use the offset function again and I'm just going to take it down to about 0.2. So just less than a quarter of an inch. And say OK. OK. And I've done that now so they're all done together. Now that seems to me like it's a little bit thicker, which is what we want. Because when we resize it, we don't want it to get too narrow. So I'd rather start off with a little bit, too, a bit, a little bit thicker rather than going too thin at this stage. Now... If I was to try to take that across and weld it, look what, all it does, or if I just undo that, even if I select everything, so let me undo and go back to where I was. There we are. If I select all, both of those shapes and weld, look what happens. You lose that frame effect. So this step that we're going to do now is absolutely vital to your project coming out right. So I'm just going to select that one and move it off to the side. And the thing to do now is select the inner and the outer of each shape and weld. Sorry, subtract. And that will knock out that shape. So we're going to do it again. Subtract. And again. Subtract. And again. And one last time. Now that's created a frame so that when we overlap with this one, it's not going to lose it. And we'll just show you quickly before I start arranging. So now when we weld, 
we get the effect that we want. So now I'm just going to undo that because that's not where I want it positioning. So I'm just going to start with this one at the top and I'm going to start with my biggest one in the middle if I can just move it across to the side. Then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to tilt it a little bit and I'm going to use it to put over here. So I'm just moving it across. I'm having a bit of a trouble with my trackpad on my eye, on my um, MacBook at the minute. So like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly the same as this original one. It's just a geometric overlapping of shapes that give you some like a funky sort of a backdrop for a card or a Media, mixed media project for a frame or something similar so all I'm doing is just overlapping where I think they might look good I'm going to move that off to the side for a bit I'm going to take this one I might take a duplicate of that one because we might need two of those I'm going to put this one over here and this time I'm just rotating to get a little bit of a jaunty angle going on I'm going to move it up I think I'll have it here for this one so it is forming a different shape. It's a very um, organic sort of thing to do. Um, not, I don't want it to look too contrived. I want it to be a little bit loose and a little bit um, jaunty. So I'm going to put that one there, I think. And then I might link those two with this one. So I'm just going to move that one up a little bit. And it's the overlaps that actually create the interest. So I'm just going to move this one as well Oops. down a little like so and this one across a little so you can play around with this as much as you like it's the process um, that's interesting and remember once you've done it with this um, shape you could do it with any shape of your choice so I'm going to leave it at that quite like how that's looking it's not exactly the same as this. I might take one there and have one, a duplicate of that. And I'm going to flip it because I want it on the other angle. And I might just bring that down over here just to give us a bit of extra shape here. And I'm quite happy with that. So now I'm going to select everything. Not that. I don't want that selected. I'll just move that across so I don't accidentally select it. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to... Just going to smooch that one that way a little bit like so okay so I'm going to select all of those that we've just placed and I'm going to weld so now that's given us that shape that's like a if I put some color in it you'll see it better so I'll put a bit of color in doesn't matter what color we'll go with that and that's where we've got to so now I'm going to shrink it down a bit and this is why I'm saying do it big and, the, and those lines bigger to start with because then when you do shrink them down they're not going to be too narrow if you will so now I'm going to take a duplicate and I'm going to flip it first of all on the vertical axis and then I'm going to flip it on the horizontal so we're going to move that down and if you look at it now you can see we've kind of got it in a mirror image sort of orientation so I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to center them on the vertical axes and we're going to layer and group so this is the process that we're going for now so now that we've got that grouped we're going to make a duplicate and we're going to line them up again centrally and vertically and then we're going to rotate by 90 degrees when we've got the top one selected. So remember, we've got a stack of two there and we're going to rotate 90 like so. Oops. It does help if I get the right thing. So I'll try that again. Oh, I must have deleted it by accident. Let me just go back and undo. Let's just redo that alignment now should work now let's just select the top one and we'll rotate 90 what oh I didn't I know what I didn't do now it's not deselected you've got to deselect and then select the top one and then go by 90 sorry about that 
and it doesn't I mustn't have the duplicate so we'll just duplicate it again because I don't know what's happened to it so we'll duplicate it we'll line them up center and ver vertical and then we're going to select the top one and rotate by 90 and that gives us that look now you can see they're all overlapping which I'm liking and I'm going to select everything and weld so now that's given us that funky shape that we can use and stick all different colours in. So what you would do is you cut it and then what I what I would do probably to save paper and having to cut it all out a million times to get the different colours that you wanted is I'm just going to bring on a square. In fact, I'm going to resize this to a, a normal sort of ish card size and we're going to make it about seven inches so it would fit nicely on an eight by eight card. So I'll make that um, eight now. So it fits within the realms of that one. So we've got the square at eight and the design at seven. Select both by selecting everything and center and middle. So that's there now. I'm going to take a duplicate. I'm just going to send that back layer to the back, the square layer to the back, so that the design's on top, and take a duplicate so that we've got a working copy because we are going to need it after this stage. So then what I would do is select the design and the square and I would go for the divide function in this case and then we can move things around. So we've got now a layer that we could do in a colour and inset that so that you could have inserted rather than flat on your card raised up. You could actually inset that into that gap in a different colour so that it looks um, a bit more aesthetically pleasing. We've got a working copy of our file and then we've got all these bits which are separate so you could decide if you were going to have like a rainbow effect so you were going to go like red 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 and put make them the color that you want them to be so maybe you'd go red 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 here like that and make those red just to help you where you're going to position them on your mat really so then you'd remove everything that was red to one side and you know that they're going to fit perfectly within these like a jigsaw puzzle piece back in so you'd go ahead and put all your red ones together and move them to the side so you've got your red pieces so you don't need to cut it like six or seven times just to get these pieces is what I'm saying which makes it much easier so then you might go if you wanted the rainbow colours you could then go orange the nice orangey colour like so um, and then move them off to an orange where you cut your orange pieces and so on. So that's what I would do. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that for a second and I'm just going to leave them in the file as they were before we started colouring everything. And that's them back to green. So now, just to make it easier for me to move them around, I'm just going to move that one back off again. I'm going too far with our, well, my going backwards need to go forwards again now because we've gone too far backwards just bear with while we get back to where we need to be so we'll do that once more so selecting both like so and then we're going to center and middle select both and then do in this case divide so that div will divide everything on your mat if you will so there's your shape where you can inset your big piece, this piece, if you wish. And there are all your little pieces that you can paper piece back in in different colours if you want. Assign them a colour and then fit them into the design. So I'm just going to select those for now. Okay, I'll delete that. I'll keep that one. So there's your design. Okay, so let's just bring that on. We'll give it a colour. I'm not going to go to the trouble of colouring everything because it just take up a lot of time on the video. And we'll bring on a square that we can put behind it and make that eight. So this is going to be an eight by eight, but you could make it smaller just by resizing everything. And as long as you don't go too thin, you'll be absolutely fine. So I'm just going to undo that because I'm going to keep mine at eight. So it's nice and big for the file online. And then you can adjust it as you wish. I'm going to make that 8, I'm going to centre it up with the other one, send that layer to the back, I don't think I quite got that one 
then do that once more so just repeat that step because I don't think I actually got centre back there we go and we'll give it a little bit of colour um, so that's where you're up to now so let's move that off up to the side and we're going to work on the greeting now and I've got your colour my world for this one but I said it might be nice if we did a different greeting this time so I'm going to use I'm going to type it out first of all, thanks NHS, okay so we'll have that and we don't want that font, we want, uh, which did I use, I have to think now it was something like a not that bear with the level up through and see if I can find this, the font that I used I mean you could pick your own there's not really a rhyme or reason to the one that I'm picking I didn't use Noteworthy last time but I might use it this time let's see what it looks like I think that's actually quite nice um, so that's the thanks NHS so now we need a circle so I'm going to bring on a circle and we're going to see what that looks like at the centre how much is going to be covered up and to me that's just a little bit big at the minute so I'm going to shrink it down a bit let's have another try so I don't want it to completely cover the whole of the design in there that's all right now I quite like that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an offset so I need to be on the edit menu which is the second icon down and we're going to go right to the bottom offset and we're going to have it at about a quarter of an inch thereabouts 0.24 will do and we're going to select both of those and we're going to subtract so now we've got the ring here so if we select both of those and hit the let me just undo that so I need to make the text a little bit smaller because I can already see that that's going to be too big for the ring so we'll try it at that, thanks NHS, select both and we want this text one fit to path like so and that's gone on the inside of the ring so that's not what we want so again now I think I've done it in the wrong order so just let me just undo back to the where we create the offset and we'll do it from there so I'm just going to bring this in, I'm going to get the offset one now, I'm just going to say okay that's where I did it, move it off to the side and save it for later, shrink this down and then it will be in the right orientation and I'm also going to add a couple of spaces in between the thanks and NHS just so it's easier to get my cursor into position later, click off, click on and then we're going to do the text fit to path, now that's where, it, it's kind of where I want it but I want it to be more round we're just going to click on the text so we can get it round and we're going to put the space in so that the NHS is going to the bottom okay so I'm just going to take one out there so I, I think it needs to go a little bit more I think that's about it so I'm going to click off and I'm going to convert that to a shape so now we have that in a circle and it's a shape which will be allowed to weld to something okay so now we've got our circle here we're going to create the offset but this time we need to go outward say okay and we're going to send that layer to the back like so and then we're going to select both and subtract so now we've got this here whoops so I'm going to bring it in to the middle where our NHS is, I'm going to manoeuvre it in so that it's lining up nicely with the NHS and I'm just going to grow it just ever so slightly just so that it fits really nicely, I'm going to move it along so it's an up a little, so I'm just doing this by eye till I'm happy with the position, okay so that's how we're looking 
maybe down a little Let's have a look at it now and I'm happy with that so I'm going to select all of those and we're going to weld and that's welded our thanks NHS together just going to undo that for a second because I'm not happy with the A maybe we didn't need to be any bigger so I'm just going to resize that but I'm going to use the actual width and so I can get it more I'll try 5.5 five and see what that's looking like I think it just had a little bit too much of an overlap so we just want it to just overlap with our letters now I'm happy with that so you'd have to play around with that little bit just to get dependent on the font that you choose and then weld it together so that's that's looking okay now I'm quite happy with that so I'm going to fill that with some colour not green because I've already got green as a backdrop and then so my idea was that with this is that you would maybe fill all those with multicolored to make your rainbow have that at the center then I made this here which was going to go in the center which has been punched out so that you could make this flower to fit underneath and just paper piece the colors back in again as you choose like whatever and just select those now and move it into position and you'll kind of see what I mean there just at the back but you get what I mean so how to make that then we'll have a look at that now it's relatively straightforward so you go on your shapes and we're looking for our this shape okay so we're going to make it really narrow and bring it down like so so we're just going to keep going with this till it's about the right size that I want it making it narrower and it might not be exactly the same as my original but you'll get the idea so that's the first one so all you need to do then is take a duplicate of that and we're going to flip it on the horizontal and we're going to scooch it down we want it quite close together so that we've got that meeting at the middle okay so I'm going to select both and line them up on the vertical axes and then we're going to group them like so next I'm going to select it and it's still a little bit big compared to my other one so I'm just going to bring it down a little bit that looks like it might be okay let's just try it in thereabouts so then I'm going to take several copies doesn't matter if we have too many I'd rather have too many than too few and we're going to one two three four five six you need six really so I suppose we could so you need one for there two three four five six yes definitely six so I'll take a few of them out then we know what we're doing so you need six copies center and vertically select them two and then click off click on the first one and you're going to rotate it by 45 degrees Oop, like so then click again and this time we'll go minus whoops just undo that because I think I deleted it so then we're going to go minus 45 and then we're going to click again and we're going to go 90 actually I've not got enough space to so just a little bit on the wide side so I'm just going to go back a step I'm just going to delete that for a second because they just need to be narrower they're just a bit too wide to get the one that I want that's better so let's delete make some of those so we've got our shapes and we're going to line them up centrally and vertically and actually the click off the angle is 30 sorry 30 then let's have a look yeah that's okay 30 and then 60 and then 90 then 120 and 150 And then, oh, we didn't have enough. Now that's what I was worried about. So let's just see if we can get 
a duplicate. So I'm just going to move it off to the side. It would have been better if we'd have had enough to start with. So let's just group those. Let's rotate that to zero. And then we'll select both and we'll line it up centre and vertical. And that's put it in the place where we want. Now, if you'd have had the right number, which I had to start with, you wouldn't have had to do that step. So I'm going to select everything. I'm going to make a duplicate move it off to the side because that's the one that we could use to pick a piece in so i'm going to make sure that all of those are actually not grouped so we're going to ungroup so that we've got each individual petal if you will that we can select separately so we might just have to select again whoops make sure everything's movable just ungroup again and hopefully we're there now so now we can move off the petals so that we can cut them out in the colours that we decide and everything. If you get any that are grouped, just ungroup them so that they're separate petals. Alternatively, you could just ungroup one and then duplicate it so you've got enough petals for that. So that's the where we're up to. So we're going to group all of that. Then we're going, so now we're going to bring on a circle that's not so big we need to reduce the size of that so that it will fit the daisy whatever you want to call it that we've just made select both shapes center and vertical make sure that the little petals are on top and they're not at the minute when I click in the petal it's selecting the circle so I know that's not on top so we're going to layer arrange and send it to the back Select both and we're going to subtract and again that's punched that out so now we've got whoops we've now got the wheel if you will with that can fit in the middle and then you'd paper piece your petals in also so that's how you make the individual parts for the thing. The only thing I've not made, and I've just realised, is this matting layer. So we'll do that now. So all you need to do is we'll just take a duplicate of that so that we know we've got one that's correct. If you will, so we'll take a, select it. We're going to go on offset, and I'm going to make it about 0.8. And I want it outward and I only want the outer edge to say OK. And if we move that out of the way now, we can delete that one because we've already got one there. So then we've got our matting layer for the words to sit on. So you can bring your words across now and they will fit perfect. Oh, do we need to bring it to the front? And they will fit perfectly on that matting layer, giving you a nice border around. And if we just go to a lighter colour, you'll see what I mean. So now you've got that sort of drop shadow effect behind by making yourself that matting layer. So then obviously that with your colours. So if I just bring in my other colours because they're set up and working properly. And I'm not going to the trouble of colouring everything. I did it just so that you get an idea what we were going for. So that's meant to sit in. We'll just have to I'll group it for a second and I'll ungroup everything for I save it. Bring it to the top. And then that can sit in the middle of your thanks, if you will. Just moving it with my keys just to be a bit more accurate. In fact, I could have just selected everything and centered everything. So why I didn't, I don't know. So we'll do that now. Select everything, center a vertical. So I'll centre it and vertical. Actually, no, you can't because it's not symmetrical now with the words on. Duh. So I'm just going to select it, move it across, like so. Let's get that out of the way. And we'll just move these into position. So that's meant to sit at the centre of that, with that with all the colour behind as the backdrop. 
So that's how you make the file. And you've, there's lots of skills there that you can use. I mean, obviously, I've used thanks in HS. You could have put congratulations round. You could have done more or less anything that you wanted to do. Now, I'm also going to be doing a video on how to make a rose wing butterfly. So I don't want to save it. Nope, because I'm really quite happy with the file that I've made. Or do I? Because I want the NHS one. Hmm, I'll save it. I'll sort it out for us. Send it up to the internet for your value. Now, this one is a file that I've made into a butterfly that has instead it has ordinary wing markings on one side and um, roses on the other. And it's actually really pretty when it's made up, especially if you take the trouble to paper piece some of the pieces back in behind it. Um, and you've got you've got also got that layer that it fits into, so you can have that sort of inset inlaid kind of look to it. Um, you could also paper piece it and then cut another one out, say in vellum, and have that three D over the top, so you get a muted colour through with them. So that's another nice file, and. I did a similar one, if I just go to the one that I made for the Day of the Dead. So don't save because we were already happy with it. And this time we've got, instead of the butterfly having the rose, we've got the sugar skull in the place there. And in that one, I've got, it's how you get the text to curve in that direction rather than that direction, if you will. So that, that's another possibility. So again, if you're interested in watching those videos, then please leave comments in the in the boxes below the video for the one that we've just shown you how to make the frame. So if you're interested in any of the butterflies or the, the sentiment, then please um, leave the comments and hopefully we can get on make a video for you. Right, that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Thanks for your continued to support. If you do like my videos, please continue to like, share and subscribe. Liking the video and commenting on the video means it's more visible to other users so that we can get a bigger following. And the more people that are coming onto the YouTube channel and being interested in the files, the more files I'm likely to make because I'm thinking that they actually are useful to people. I don't really, it does take time to do these videos and um, although I actually enjoy it, there doesn't seem much point if nobody's actually bothered about watching them or making them or downloading the files or whatever over on my blog which are always free beverly10.blogspot i don't charge anything for the download um although at some point in the, the future i might decide to put a tip box on that you can tip if you wanted to you don't have to because when i do my makes especially things that i make for other people if i do things like for it don't make really things for a profit but <laughs> my my the money that I do make from my crafting, I um donate to the Cancer Care Trust Macmillan or um Best Cancer Care. So um that's what I might do in the future. But at the moment everything's completely free and even if I put a tip box there, it's still gonna be completely free and down to you whether you wish to actually add anything to it. There's no obligation and you haven't even got one set up yet. So at the moment, just head over there and download enjoy whatever okay that's it for now i hope you've enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time bye